Hello everybody, this is Sean with Shaper. We've got a fun one here for you today. We're doing materials and cutters, everything you need to know about cutting everything except wood. Yeah, we're going to get into this. Uh, we've got a bunch of slides, a bunch of uh, info and sort of fundamental concepts about uh, cutters. And then we're going to look at the different geometries and the types of uh, approaches you're going to take to various materials. We'll point out to uh, where to find resources uh, and then cut a few things if we get an opportunity. We'll get an opportunity, definitely. So first up, we'll just look down here, Noah, uh, at these little example pieces of material. So um, you'll notice there's not a lot of wood here. There's uh, corian, uh, copper, uh, foam PVC, veneer, acrylic, uh, dye bond. This is like a uh, layer of plastic with aluminum on the top and the bottom. Uh, colored MDF, uh, chipboard uh, with a melamine coating. Uh, hardwood, uh, oak, uh, this is our foam from our, uh, our sustainer insert, and then this is some crazy uh, honeycomb aluminium, uh, and then modeling foam, this is like uh, for creating 3D models and things if you want to do casting models or something like that. Basically the big takeaway here is uh, if you can find a cutter geometry uh, that is appropriate for the material you're cutting, uh, in most cases with, uh, with Origin you'll be able to cut using it. So uh, there's a few limitations. Uh, there's the max diameter of the cutter. So um, we'll get this here. We'll go back to that camera, Noah. Um, so this one I believe is three quarters or an inch. Uh, so that's getting pretty close to the maximum diameter of what we can uh, operate in origin. So uh, one inch diameter. Uh, any bigger than that and we collide with the uh, the little aperture uh, that accommodates the cutter. So that's one limit. And then the maximum depth we can accommodate is uh, 1.75 inches of Z travel. So uh, that's the, the other two main limits to consider. The other one is, uh, let's see here, use cutters, here's another one Noah, um, that can be observed uh, sorry, that, that do not have this following bearing on it. So you can see that's for uh, following patterns or uh, trim routing. So that bearing at the top uh, is a problem for operating with Origin. You'd use a traditional trim router, a hand router to use this cutter. So any, any cutter that's appropriate for a uh, CNC or um, whatever uh, is, is going to be usable with Origin. The one other thing is to keep in mind, if the cutter requires uh, like liquid coolant or something, then uh, don't attempt to operate that in origin. So ferrous metals are out, uh, some like granite, stuff like that, concrete, ceramics, uh, anything that needs to be cooled with liquid, uh, you won't want to cut with origin. But we've still got a huge range of things we can cut. We'll start looking at them now. We'll cut over to the slides and just go through some sort of core concepts. And then we'll get into looking at some actual cutters and the materials you would use them for. We'll just keep moving through these. The stock cutters we ship with, carbide, and they're two flute upcut square end mills. So the quarter inch one, this is in America or North America, sorry the way. Europe gets a different set of cutters, but I'll talk about the North American ones. The stock one is a quarter inch shank. So you see the shank called out down the bottom there. So there's the quarter inch shank, that's the stock collet that ships with origin. Any cutter with a quarter inch shank will work just fine in origin, so long as you take into account those limitations we said at the beginning. So quarter inch shank, quarter inch cutting diameter, so that's the amount of material that's cleared out. And then you'll see the cutting flute length on the top right there. That's the maximum depth our stock cutter can cut to. So that's in the case of our one, three quarters of an inch. And we'll get to some of the reasoning behind that. A good rule of thumb is three times the diameter of the cutter, of the cutting flutes is the maximum depth that most cutters go to. Some go beyond that, but they start to get a bit unstable. They start to bend, but we'll look into that in future. And then the helix angle, we don't need to worry about that too much right now, but that's another parameter to know. And that's the angle that those cutting flutes, that spiral extracts chips out of the material with. Now there's kind of, uh, there's a huge range of different geometries. We with Origin favor upcut cutters. So what they're doing, uh, that's the one on the right there, you can see I've called out the direction that the cutter rotates. So it's extracting chips up out of the material. So the upside of that is it pulls origin down onto the material. So versus a down cutter, which we see on the other side, it's pushing chips down into the material 
and as a side effect of that, it's pushing Origin up off the material. So if you do happen to get one of those, make sure you don't load it up heavily. Make sure you don't do big, massive, fast, deep cuts with it. Otherwise, it'll push Origin up off the surface, and you'll have less friction, and then you'll move faster, and you end up in this sort of pretty jerky experience. So just for a good, clean cut experience, we use an upcut cutter. So that has the added benefit of it's extracting chips out of the cut channel. So the next time a cutting flute rotates around and goes to cut, it's not contaminated with chips that should be out of the way. The upcut clears them as efficiently as possible. I'll let you read the rest of that. We'll keep moving through the slides. There's quite a few to get through. Then there's considerations if you're shopping for cutters. So we've already called out with the stock collet, you're going to want to go for the quarter inch collet. And then end geometry plays a modest role. The type of end geometry we use or ship with the stock one is the end mill. So that gets you a combination of moderately good plunge speed. It extracts chips, it clears the path in front of it quite well. And it also gives you a very good bottom finish of a pocket. It tries to cut that nice and smooth. Whereas you look at the crescent and the fishtail at the top and the bottom, whilst they're able to plunge faster, there's not as much of a flat surface engaging the bottom of your pocket. So you don't get as smooth a finish on the bottom of pockets. But that's just some of the things to consider. It's not like you can't use both of those in Origin. In fact, we use them often. Just that describes part of the reason why we've selected the end mill for the stock one. So here's a visual of our stock cutter. And you'll see, yeah, quarter inch, three quarters max flute length. This is a good cutter for just general purpose wood cutting. So the only downside with up cutting is you'll get a little bit of fuzz on the top of your cuts, but you just hit that with sandpaper and you're good to go. So in terms of trade-offs and pros and cons, this is a very good sort of cutter to kick off cutting a wide range of material, but primarily it's focused for wood. This is the cutter we were just showing you. So we'll cut over to the, this is a straight flute cutter. And we'll look at an example of this. This is designed for clearing large areas. This one I'm showing you, you'll notice in the very center of it, and I'll try and move a little closer, there's a little detail. There's actually a, it's a carbide insert. So in the center there, there's one that enables this to plunge down. Instead of only cutting around the perimeter and not cutting a uh, chunk out of the center, this one cuts everywhere. So it can clear material out in front of it as it plunges. It can also cut three quarters of an inch deep. So this is a great option. You know, with Origin, you can change your tool paths, update your cutter diameter as you go. So you're not locked into just doing an entire pocketing operation with the stock cutter, for instance. You can change to a half inch or a three quarter. All the tool paths and things will adapt for you. So this is a great way of clearing a lot of material should you need to. So it's yeah, great for pocketing and like rabbits and dados, slots like that. Just know that those straight flutes on it don't extract chips as efficiently. So it's it's great if you've got a channel already cut around it where those chips can clear out of the way a little. So we'll move on to the next one. Once again, that was for wood. Now we've talked about up cutters, down cutters. This one's kind of a hybrid. So this is for delicate laminates. In fact, I used it on that malamine just to keep everything from delaminating. So basically what it's doing is the bottom, it's about a quarter of an inch, is actually an up cutter and the, the remainder of the cutter is a down cutter. So it's doing a combination of pulling the bottom up and pushing the top down. So it's sort of working like scissors in a way. It's not super good for extracting chips because most of the cutting flutes are down cuts, but it does get you a very clean finish. And one of the reasons we don't sort of use it more is all the grinding, which is what you pay for usually with cutters. It's not so much the material, it's the complexity of the grinding and how much time it takes to remove material into these specific shapes. So this one's quite a heavy or a complicated long operation to grind, and these cost a little more as a result. But uh, really good if you've got some precious veneers or something like that. Now this is an O flute. Now this is for soft metals and hard plastics. So we use this one, this is a quarter inch one, but I often use a little eighth inch one. So this little guy is very good at clearing a lot of material in plastic. So it's got the added advantage. It's a single flute, it's an up cut, and it's a very stubby cutter. We'll look into this later. So that the cutting flute length is only like quarter of an inch. So having one cutting flute means it doesn't introduce as much heat into your cut. So for each rotation, there's a, there's a less friction. So this is very good for cutting plastic, cutting metals, clearing the chips out of the way, which is essential for both of those. That's soft metals, brass, copper, aluminium. And 
So yeah, reduced heat buildup. There's that huge cavity up the center, which is designed to clear, prioritizes clearing chips over everything else. So it's reducing the heat buildup. And this gets you clean cuts and things like acrylic or your sort of polycarbonates, you name it. I should make a note for materials like acrylic and for brass and aluminum, there's actually different grades of all these sort of things. So acrylic, for example, it sells as various trademarks. There's two types, there's uh, cast and there's extruded. And the cast type is, it's very consistent. The quality of the material is not very variable and it's stronger, clearer, and nicer to machine. So try to find the, the cast material. The only downside of the cast one is the thickness. Because of the way they manufacture it, the thickness is a little variable. So make sure you measure your acrylic that's made that way. The extruded stuff is more variable and has more sort of streaks of different, uh, I guess the way they're sort of, uh, it lays up. It, it can be kind of uh, a bit different, a bit uh, more, more brittle, not as strong, and uh, not as nice to work with. Um, and the same applies for like brass. There's like, if you look on McMaster, We'll share a link in the comments, actually. Uh, if you search for, uh, I think it's 360 machinable brass, it'll be a lot easier to work with uh, with Origin. You'll find the chips will, will clear out a lot nicer um, and, and you'll get much better cut quality. Uh, this, for example, is a, an example of that. So it's a little using an interesting cutter. We'll get to it in a bit. But that end was cut with an O flute and it's pretty clean for a handheld router like Origin. And the same with those little holes. Helix holes actually come through very, very cleanly. They're very nicely managed. But for that sort of thing, you have to use auto mode and we'll walk through some of the settings for that sort of thing. And these are actually really fun. This is a round over bit and there's a range of different styles. This has a carbide insert. So the main, the blue part steel and then the little metal or shiny pieces are carbide. So they're very hard and very strong and durable. So these are great for putting a curve on the outside of, we often use them for text and things. So you can see the carbides brazed onto it. So these are not that expensive and really handy to have around. So if you were using this in Origin, you'll see the, the center piece there has there's just a small little element in the center there that you would use, you'd describe that as your diameter for your cutter. So Origin doesn't know anything about the geometry of the cutter. But if you look at that, just that little length there, you'd measure that with calipers and then enter that in as your diameter with origin. And then you'll be able to round over your corners. So I would go, you know, around this and be making that a curved surface. Now there's an advantage to that. So when you go into the corners of geometry, some of these are actually, I'll get another one, it's more obvious. Like ordinarily people are accustomed to doing this sort of thing with a following bit on a, a trim router. So you look at the diameter of that bearing, it doesn't allow me to get right into this corner. So you end up having to do a little post treatment to round over sharp corners. The advantage of doing it with Origin and a, one of these round over bits without a bearing is you can use one like this. So that's got a little, I think it's a quarter inch radius on that. But see how it goes to such a fine point at the end there. That means I can round all the way into this corner, just following the same paths, I would enter like a point 001 for the diameter of this cutter. And then if I just follow along, I get a, a really nice little round over with that. That's just a little tip for uh, doing signage type work. Conical ball nose. This is getting into the, some sort of less common cutters and kind of interesting cutters. These are often used for uh, like aluminum sort of mold making and, and doing big contour carving and that sort of thing on traditional CNC's. With Origin, we can kind of take advantage of that and use it for signage because it's got that ball nose so the tip of it is rounded so we can cut down into any kind of material you want and get that sort of curved angle there and then for mold making you also need a draft angle so I'll see this you might be able to see here this has a draft angle based on a exactly that cutter so you might not be able to tell but the top is narrower than the bottom so this is HDPE and I cut it with that cutter. So it's not the perfect cutter. It's not an O flute cutter, but you're able to get a serviceable result. For mold making, this would make a great element that would release very easily. The combination of HDPE being uh, like really difficult for things to adhere to. And then also that draft angle, which is the difference between this being vertical and in a little bit, means that any, any you know, concrete or something 
that was placed over this letter would release very easily. So that's something to keep in mind there. Burr cutters, these are great for composites. Composites, be careful. There's a bunch of you know, safety precautions, wear a mask that can produce some sort of pretty nasty dust. Should you want to cut composites, this is the tool for the job. So it's just kind of a, like a rasp and it'll just clear, sort of mash its way through the material. It actually gets you a pretty good edge. Just make sure you take care of that dust. Good dust extraction, good mask, and keep that swept away. And then this is, we've kind of already discussed ball nose with the conical ball nose. This is just a straight ball nose and we can actually jump out. I've got one here ready to cut. So this is often, we use these in, in signage for origin. So yeah, often you'll see the center of this red thing here. I cut this with the engraving cutter, the stock one that ships with origin. So that's a, I think it's 60 degree engraving tip. At some point you might want to fatten up this and you don't want to use the engraver to, to go that deep. So a ball nose is a great way of getting in there, cutting it with origin. The deeper you go, the wider the, the cut becomes. A little tip, if you are doing this, cutting open paths like a, a letter or something, um, you might be able to see the M down here, just. Uh, because with open paths, you can't do an offset. So you can't come through into a cleaning operation afterwards. What I do is cut slightly shallower to clear most of the material out. And then I do a finishing pass, just add a tiny uh, extra depth to it. So that's the equivalent of doing like a, 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 an offset for your uh, finishing pass as you'd usually do with Origin. So I'm just gonna drop this in here. Um, I might bring, can you bring that camera over here and just sort of point at that, please? So we'll just do a quick cut and show you what that looks like. Um, So I'll do a Z touch, make sure uh, Origin knows what height that is. And then we'll, uh, I'll just start cutting and Sean will get this camera hooked up and we'll uh, see what we're up to. So you can see what I've already cut. Uh, it's a quarter inch diameter cutter. So if I went down uh, 0.125, if it's a perfect sphere, uh, that would be, you know, the bottom or you know, halfway down that sphere. That would be the full ball would be uh, embedded in the surface, cut out the, the material. Now I've done uh, 0.1. Uh, that means I've still got the option of coming through and going deeper should I want to do to clear that last little piece. So I'm just gonna cut some more things here and we'll, uh, we'll see what this looks like. So just for reference, uh, there's a couple of things to consider here. Uh, my tape job, this is HDPE. So I'll show you that little, there's the M there. So you get really clean outcomes with this uh, and it's, it's actually really easy and quick. Um, now, one thing to keep in mind, this was all done with the on tool uh, text, basic text capability. So haven't even, I mean, not this bit, but this, uh, haven't even touched a computer to create this. Uh, HDPE is really, uh, really difficult to adhere things to. So most like don't, plan on gluing this to anything once you've created anything, it's got to be mechanically fastened. So the shaper tape doesn't adhere to it super well, so I've actually put um, painter's tape down underneath it. That helps it stay in place throughout the cut. Uh, that's about it. I've got double-sided tape holding things in place underneath, and this is HDPE with a top layer of black material and then a layer of white and then more black on the bottom. You often see them in uh, playgrounds. Uh, where they add text and you know make things look a little more fun than just a solid color wood. So as I cut through the top, you'll see the white exposed. Um, not much more to it than that. So I'm uh, at four is my RPM. Uh, I have my quarter inch cutter defined. So you'll see the area that's gonna be removed highlighted here. Uh, I'm cutting to 0.1 inches deep. I've done my Z touch so I know what height my cutter is. So now it's 0.1 inches deeper than Z equals zero. Uh, there's no offset, I'm cutting on the line, let's go. Oh, 
Uh, apparently now it's got a thing running that means I can talk whilst I'm cutting. So, uh, so it doesn't look great when it's got uh, all the dust in it, but uh, that's actually super clean. I'll uh, peel this off so we can see. So yeah, this is a great way of getting a little sign up and running uh, and would also be pretty cool to use as a, uh, as a mold for making some casting silicon, concrete, whatever you want to do. I know there's a few people watching who are uh, into mold making. So uh, there you go, and you can keep going, uh, change to different cutters. You can even use one of these uh, roundover cutters, experiment with uh, different, different cutters here, um, so you could cut ornamental stuff with this and it'll it'll all your text will look quite different based on the cutter diameter you're using so you're not tied to that engraving that very slender line you can uh, you can beef it up and do whatever you like um, next slide oh, this one's actually super interesting so this is uh, this one you don't run, run. we might have shown this previously this, this is, is a little, little diamond uh, cutter from bits and bits so uh, it's not actually a cutter at all. All it does is scores the material. So yeah, it, if we look really close here, um, yeah, that, that scored, I made a little Miet tag. That's all done with this. So we don't turn the cutter on. We just drop it down to basically zero and just sort of scratch it over the surface. And the very tip of this, you might not be able to see much more than we did in the image, it's like a little diamond, or like a you know industrial diamond in the tip that uh, yeah you can sort of see it. Uh, that just is very strong, and uh, so long as you don't drop it, will uh, will get you a really clean sort of score mark. So if you want a, fi a very fine engraving with a lot of detail, uh, that's that's the way to go. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do that here. This is actually just a the standard shelf. I uh, gridded it. And then I cut a little pocket that's exactly the same thickness as this. So this is machinable brass, uh, which makes it easier on me. And you'll see here of the previous one I just cut now, um, slots in like that. And uh, we can cut through it with, once again, that same O flute, as we mentioned previously. So uh, I'm going to pop out the cutter that's in here. So that's the ball nose. And swap to a, uh, this little scoring one. So uh, this is just the same operation. Make sure you unplug Origin, take it out. And this is once again a uh, standard quarter inch shank cutter. I install it in here, hold down the uh, locking button, and then just torque it. Modest hand tight, it doesn't need to be that tight at all. Uh, make sure this slot aligns with my indexing pins in the back of the spindle clamp, and then tighten it up. Uh, I can actually leave this unplugged because I don't intend to uh, actually operate the spindle at all. Uh, this little fixture was cut, like ordinarily you might put cams or something in here to hold this in place. I'm actually relying on just the fact that Origin is precise enough uh, that I cut this exactly a quarter, uh, three quarters of an inch and then I'm using friction to just keep it in place. So uh, you'll notice uh, if we cut to the screen, Noah, I'm actually jumping between workspaces here. So I'm on the workstation here. This enables me to fixture things up super quick. And the moment I present the workstation to Origin's camera, it sees these markers and tells me, let's go back to that project. So I just hit the green button. This just says, hey, uh, what do you want to do? Uh, go to workspace 111. And there's my project ready to go. So I'm going to erase my cut history. That's the one I cut previously. I'm going to make my cutter diameter uh, engrave. And then I'm going to uh, do a Z touch. Every time you change cutter, uh, you perform a Z touch. And when you change the cutter diameter, Origin will remind you to perform a Z touch. Um, with this little one, because it's not removing material, it's very sensitive. So I'm going to start by telling it I'm cutting zero depth. Yeah, so uh, there we go. And everything is good. Uh, I'll just check my speeds, because I'm going to do this in auto mode, which will mean I'll hold down the green button, and it will move at a fixed feed rate. So you'll see the spindle here moving on its own as it uh, scores this. 
let's see here. So it's going to go down. Yeah, that's a little, I'm actually going to do a tiny negative. So this is, as I said, the the depth that I press this down to has a big impact on uh, on the depth we're actually cutting at. So uh, two negative. So I'm just raising it up ever so slightly so that we're so it doesn't move origin around when it touches it. Okay, it's touching it. It's plunging down. So pay attention to this, and you'll see it moving along on its own. And I'm going to just hold origin still. Oh, it uh. <laughs> It's uh, actually pretty squirrely to get it just the right height. But we'll uh, have a look at this and see what we got here. So I might go a little, little lower as well. Oh. That explains that. So here's my text. And then we can actually swap and cut this element out. I won't cut all of this. Uh, I won't score all of this. You notice I'm resisting the force a bit. Super low, yeah. So I'm going to cut this out now, and we'll have a look at this. Yeah, I didn't get that shallow enough, so it's a bit uh, suboptimal. Now I'm swapping to the O flute. So this is a eighth inch cutter, and it's that O flute, uh, a single single O flute that's totally focused on chip extraction. So this is good for plastics, hard plastics, and uh, soft metals. And I've got a, a slot here that's ready to cut this on the side. So I'm going to do a small uh, offset. Keep in mind, all of this was done with OnTool CAD. So uh, didn't do any messing around on a computer to make this. Um, I'll do a Z-touch to make sure we're at the right depth. And hopefully, we've got enough friction to hold this in place. So I'm going to start by doing a 0.02 uh, offset. And you'll notice my toolpath updates immediately. So what I'm doing is leaving 0.02 uh, inches in place. So there'll be a little extra material that I'll come through and trim off. So I'm going to set this. Uh, we'll leave it at RPM of uh, about 4. And I'm going to do cut it to a depth of 0.05. Uh, the total thing is about, I believe it's 0.125 total. So uh, 0.05, we'll leave our auto speed at 8, and our uh, plunge speed will lower that down. Uh, one advantage I've got here, I'm not plunging directly into the brass. I'm plunging to the side of it and then moving through it. Uh, if you were to plunge directly into brass, you would probably go for a uh, 0.25 uh, plunge rate. So that's inches per minute. That's how slow the cutter moves down into the material. So uh, I'll just go five for the meantime. So I'm going to plunge to the side and then pass through my stock, and we'll see how that works. And then, oh yeah, so, so people remembering, uh, I could actually talk through this. So, uh, we then double that, we go point one. So that won't be the whole way through yet. So we'll leave our roughing offset in place. And I'm just moving, uh, not using what I made for this. I'm just listening to it to make sure we're good. Looks good. And then I'll remove my offset and make this uh, point one three. Then they cut a little deeper. This will be a finishing pass, so I've set my offset to zero, so it'll strip away that extra 0.02. Okay. So that I'm just keeping firm pressure downwards on the handles. So you'll notice we're taking shallower passes when we're cutting through materials like brass, but uh, it looks like 
the uh, friction was enough to hold that in place. Look at that hand cut quality. That's, That's pretty, pretty good. That's, uh, you know. That's the uh, that's what we just did there now. So that's just held in place with friction. Um, you'll see it from the top. Looks pretty good. I'll show you the uh, the engraving on that one. Didn't work out that well, but this one did. So uh, that's the same same thing. And then that's you'll see the uh, the finish on that top edge is pretty accurate. So you can see it's shiny, so it'll show any imperfections, but you'll see it's pretty, pretty straight. That's another material that's totally within our wheelhouse. This is now getting into the sort of more exotic or interesting cutters. These are roughing cutters. So this is designed for removing a lot of material quickly. This one, you can see the sort of corrugations along the edge. It, it works more like a, um, it doesn't get you a smoother edge finish, but it's designed to cut deeper in a single pass. And you also notice the helix angle of this is shallower. So it's less aggressively extracting chips, but it should be more aggressively cutting down to a pretty serious depth. That's focused on wood as well. Now we're getting into the fun stuff. So we've talked a lot about the flute length on these cutters, and I just want to visualize that for you. So when selecting a cutter, it's often tempting to just be like, I I'm going to get the longest one I can, you know, like, why not? It might have something really thick I need to cut. Well, there's downsides to that, and hopefully this illuminates that. So the little ones up the front, that's 8-inch cutters, and we have an 8-inch collet with, that we sell on our store that can operate them. Now, they're great for fine detail. A lot of luthiers use them for uh, guitar frets, all sorts of things like that. And you can see what happens, though. As we change the flute length, closest to the bottom is an 8-inch it's sort of covered up by that little minimum zero thing. If the cutting flutes were eighth inch long, you'd get a very stable cutter. And you see as it goes up through the different lengths, through half inch and then an inch over there, it starts to deform more. That's what we're looking at is the total deformation. It's sort of exaggerated here. This is just assuming there's no geometry. We're just looking at the raw material. If there was a rod and a load at the very top, how much would that deform? So what is why are we so worried about deformation? Well, if we're cutting with a very long cutter that's not very stable, which means the diameter of the cutter to the length of the cutter is really bad, like it's very long and very narrow, the cutter starts to flex while we cut. It'll sound really shrill, but it has some like noticeable negative issues being, for a starters, cut quality deteriorates. And then you've got things like obviously more noise, but accelerated wear on your collet. So your collet is going to start to loosen up and vibrate loose. So combining those things, that's bad. But then also you get to, at extreme cases, your cutter will actually fail as well. So you can break cutters just from them flexing too much. Carbide is very brittle. You almost treat it like a ceramic, but it can break with these vibrations. Now you notice to solve that, you can go to a bigger diameter cutter. So the, if the carbide is, the center strip there is quarter of an inch. So that's a stock cutter we see called out in the middle there. And you'll see it's blue and is not deflecting much at all. That's because it's cut length to diameter of the carbide itself is very reasonable. You can see if we went all the way to a 1.75 inch cutter that was quarter of an inch wide, the diameter of the shank and the cutting flutes were a quarter of an inch, it would start to be flexing a lot as well. You can see at the top there, that red tip is showing pretty extreme flexing. Now, the next solution beyond that would be to go to an eight millimeter shank. So you can actually buy, I think it's on the next slide. Uh, this is just an example of our little eighth inch cutter. So this, this enables us to cut small things. And you'll see down the bottom of this is listed out the Festool product that fits uh, the origin spindle that enables you to put an, an eight millimeter cutter in. And that has the added benefit of enabling you to be much longer cutting flutes, which enable you to cut deeper to bigger pockets, that sort of thing, without introducing that flex. So that's just something to consider. Quickly before we wrap up, we're almost done here. Preserving your cutter. The worst thing you can do with a cutter is have it heat up that, uh, apart from drop it on a, on a concrete floor. Like, as we said, carbide is very brittle. It'll chip if it drops on something hard. But the next thing to consider for preserving the lifetime of your cutter is heat. So how do we avoid heat buildup? Keep moving origin. If it lingers in one place spinning at a high RPM, it's like a sort of a scout trying to start a fire. So you want to avoid that. 
And the other thing is turn your RPMs down. You'll notice we were doing most of our cutting here on four. For wood, you'll find yourself at five, so long as you keep moving. And then if you go to six, you really have to be pretty productive. You have to keep origin moving. Otherwise, it's introducing so much heat into your cutter, it's going to de degrade that cutting edge. The other thing to keep in mind, the buildup of resins and adhesives and things. So care for your cutter, take care of it, clean it off, clean all the resins off, any adhesives. On the right there, we've got a slide that shows you, you know, use a little brass brush and some bit cleaner. You don't want to use anything that's like going to add oil to your cutter. Otherwise, it won't be fixed in place by the collet as well. So you want it to be able to be cleaned off, dried, and then used with origin. Yeah, care for your cutter, care for your collet, and it'll last you a good amount of time. So that's cutters and materials. That's a sort of a crash course, top to bottom. There's obviously a lot more to it. There's, you know, you could study this stuff for eternity and still be discovering better ways of doing things more efficiently, a more, you know, unique cutter for a very specific scenario. But I hope that's a good sort of grounding. Okay, well, I think that's gonna do it for us today.